Okay. As I'm sure you have paid attention, <laughs> and this sort of captured it perfectly the other day, uh, Tanahisi Coates uh, is a very respected scholar, um, especially in liberal circles. But he did go on CBS the other day, and he had some things to share about his opinion about what's going on in Palestine right now. And the reaction from the white moderate kind of tells you everything you need to know. So here we go. Actually, I want to dive into the uh, Israel-Palestine section of the book, yeah. the largest it's section fun. of the book. Mm. And I have to say, when I when I read the book, I, want to I imagine him. if I took your name out of it, took away the awards and the acclaim, took the cover off the book, the publishing house goes away. The con First of all, he is such a pompous ass on the on the highest <laughs> level. Like he just he has he like, screams just, Yale. Yeah. Did he, who did who is this? Uh, who is that? What nepo baby is that? Does it matter? No, <laughs> I'm just disgusted. White man cometh. That but is not. But he's also with. a Zio tool. Yes, absolutely. But aren't they all? This is just that's a, also a he class just thing. does it. He just does it in such a way where you are automatically in coaches. This corner. is such like an Ivy League looking person. hundred percent vomit. Content of that section mm. would not be out of place in the backpack of an extremist. Mm. And so then I found myself wondering, why does Tanahashi Coates, who I've known for a long time, read his work for a long time, very talented, smart guy, leave out so much? Mm. Why leave well, out that Israel is surrounded by countries that want to eliminate it? Why well, leave out okay, that see, Israel that deal? right there. That right there. The fact that that guy said that means he is not a serious person and that this is not a serious show, which it doesn't look like anyway. So they should be grateful that he was willing to grace them, these morons, with his presence. What is it also, that's just not a serious thing to say. What does it also say about addressing Mr. Coates in the third person? He couldn't even talk to him like a regular person. I know Tanahisi Coates to be this great guy. No, he's, he's just right setting there. it up. I whatever. This he's so douchey. Who is that? I gotta look it up. All right. Well, let's. Mr. Coates, I'm sure, has some very poor. Yeah. No, he to goes. Wait, the terror me, groups yeah. that want to eliminate it. Mm. Why not detail anything of the first and the second intifada? The cafe bombings, the bus bombings, mm. the little kids blown to bits. And is it because you just don't believe that Israel, in any condition? has a right to exist. Mm, mm, mm. Mm. Well, I would yeah. say the perspective that you just outlined, um, yeah. there is no shortage of that perspective in American media. Um, that's the first thing I would say. Um, I am most concerned always with those who don't have a voice, with those who don't have the ability to talk. Um, I have asked repeatedly in my interviews <clears throat> whether there is a single network mainstream organization in America with a Palestinian American bureau chief or correspondent who actually has a voice to articulate their part of the world. Um, I've been a reporter for 20 years. Um, the reporters of those who believe more sympathetically about Israel um, and its right to exist don't have a problem getting their voice out. But what I saw in Palestine, what I saw on the West Bank, what I saw in Haifa in Israel, what I saw in the South Hebron Hills, those were the stories that I have not heard. And those were the stories that I was most occupied with. I wrote a 260 page book it is not uh, a treatise on the entirety of the conflict between the Palestinians and the Israelis. But if you were to read this book, you would be left wondering, why does any of Israel exist? What a horrific place committing horrific acts on a daily basis. So I think the question is central and key. Mm. If, if Israel has a right to exist, and if your answer is no, then I guess the question becomes, why do the Palestinians have a right to exist? My um, this guy... <laughs> is such a first of all the fact that the other two people on the panel are not even being included in the conversation well right? this is clearly right no there's that but of course i did look him up and yes he not only is he a total douche but he's from down here uh, he's a south florida dude <laughs> yeah you're welcome he went to gulliver prep as soon as i saw that on here and then gw in columbia so oh, okay you're welcome. You're welcome for that world. Wait, you mean the hair didn't give it away? I didn't necessarily know he was from down here, but I'm not surprised. Anyway. And for those of you who don't know, Mr. How do you say his name? I don't know. How do you say that? Duckapool? Duckapool? Okay, Tony Duckapool <laughs> is married to Katie Turk. I don't know who that is. Let's just say that it's an incestuous world that the mm. DC bubble people tend to live in. And uh, he's also small. Time. He's 5'8. Yeah. Oh, well, that's what I was showing listen, you. I'm what? just saying. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's, 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 let me tell you something. With men. 
Yes, there is absolutely an insecurity thing. It is not a coincidence that presidents are all tall. It is not a coincidence that that is the case. And it has to, I'm telling India, you. India, in case you were wondering, Ron DeSantis is five foot eight as well. He wears lifts. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. That's not uh, yeah, a Yeah, I heard that. You exactly. know who else Why wears lifts? Lift? Our former congressman, um, Brian Higgins, he he left Congress to go to the theater company, the local theater company, Buffalo Politics. Man, I, People should pay more <laughs> attention to Buffalo politics just for the ridiculousness of it. But anyway, he wears <laughs> lifts in his shoes too. <laughs> You know, the sad truth is, and you even brought up the fact, I'm not a fan of the Working Families Party as a whole, but I am a fan of the Working Families Party in New York because I think they actually do a pretty good job. You know, it's unfortunate because I think one of the things, and this is one of the things related to Eric Adams that's going on right now that I don't think is being talked about is you do, this is what I consider to be the positive side of the AOC effect. I do think that there is this sort of left contingent within New York City that is definitely paying a lot more attention to the corruption yeah. within city politics. I don't think Buffalo has that element that Manhattan and, you know, Queens and the Bronx does. And I think if it did, that's where a lot of these stories that we're talking about, most people don't know about them, but they should mm -hmm. know about them. I think that that is vital. And when you get somebody like this guy who is just completely glossing over everything that Israel is doing right now, all he wants to do is antagonize this guy. And I'm thinking, well, if you're already on board with what Israel is doing, why did you bring him on? Did you bring right. him on to just try to cut him down? Well, or did were you stupid enough to think that you were going to gotcha Tanahisi Coates? Like, that's just what I don't I like understand. Like what? Like, and I don't know. Look, just the whole way. Look at how they're it's, sitting. Look at the difference in how they're sitting. Yes. His, his first answer was very pointed and sufficient. Right. And then he goes right yes. back in on it. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. Keep trying to push him around. I, I find him to be very gracious about the whole thing. He, I, I want to like punch this. Mr. Guy. Coates handles himself well. Let's well, see what he yeah. has to say for him. But Why do 20 different Muslim countries? My answer is that no country in this world establishes its ability to exist through rights. Countries establish their ability to exist through force, um, as America did. And so I think this question of right to Israel does exist. It's a fact. Uh, the question of its right is not a question that I would be faced with with any other country. But you write a book that delegitimizes the pillars of Israel. It seems like an effort to topple the whole building of it. So I, I come back to the question, and it's what I struggled with throughout this book. What is it that so particularly offends you about the existence of a Jewish state that is a Jewish safe place and not any of the other states out there. There's nothing that offends me about a Jewish state. I am offended by the idea of states built on ethnocracy, no matter where they are. Muslim included. <clears throat> I would not want a state where any group of people laid down their citizenship rights based on ethnicity. The country of Israel is a state in which half the population exists on one tier of citizenship and everybody else that's ruled by Israelis exist on another tier, including Palestinian Israeli citizens. The only people that exist on that first tier are Israeli Jews. Why do we support that? Why, why is that okay? He's the sitting there thinking it's perfectly fine. I'm the child of people that were born into a country where that was exactly the case of American apartheid. I walk over there and I walk through the occupied territories and I walk down a street in Hebron and a guy says to me, I can't walk down the street unless I profess my religion. I'm with another pal. No, 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 no. I want to. Uh, this yeah, is very, very it important. Is important. It is extremely important. Yeah, let me lay it down. I'm working with uh, the person that is guiding me. Is a Palestinian, whose father, whose grandfather and grandmother was born in this town, and I have more freedom to walk than he does. He can't ride on certain roads. He can't get water in the same way that Israeli citizens who live less than a mile away from him can. And why is why that? Why is that okay? Why is that? Why, why is there no agency in this book for the Palestinians? They, they exist in your narrative merely as victims of the Israelis, as though they were not offered peace at any juncture, as though they don't have a stake him. in this as well. What is their role in the lack of a Palestinian? I have a very, 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 very moral compass about this. And again, perhaps it's because of my ancestry. Either apartheid is right or it's wrong. It's, it's, it's really, really simple. Either what I saw was right or it's wrong. I am, for instance, against the death penalty. What the person did yes. to get the death penalty 
it really doesn't matter to me. I don't care if they were selling a nickel bag of marijuana or if they were a serial killer. I am against the death penalty. Mm. I am against a state that discriminates against people on the basis of ethnicity. I'm against that. There is so nothing the Palestinians could do that, that would make that okay for me. My book is not based on the hypermorality of the message Palestinian you want people. In lessons, because many people feel it's complicated. You say it's not complicated. Less than 20 seconds. What's your message? Here? Less than 20 seconds. I want people to read the book. Well, yeah. And I don't make the assumption that somebody would just read the book and have written and have read nothing, nothing else, else about okay. Israel and Palestine. You're still invited to high holidays. I'll see you at the show. <laughs> God in heaven, this guy is such okay, an so asshole. Okay, so I just did, India, this is interesting. I just did a brief bit of research. So th that guy's ex-wife and two of his children live in Israel. Oh. Uh-huh. So, which I think is somewhat of you Conflict know of interest well, it, just slightly uh, i yeah i he do. might be a little I mean, biased it's, it's a lot biased you know so that's just, yeah i just looked that up yep his ex-wife and two of his children live in israel well they did as of you know at the end of last year who for all i know they're here now but clearly he has an axe to grind so they're set they're settler colonists correct you had three people there for the interview. It went for about six or seven minutes. Not short, but and not Gail too long. Pipes Gail in. decides to pipe oh, it's in with complicated. 20 seconds left without even giving him an opportunity Whatever. to give a response. She is so freaking bougie, it's annoying. And right? allowing Tony to just dominate that conversation. And it's as if to suggest, but is Tony Jewish? Is that? I don't get that from his last name, no. Unfortunately, this is corporate media in a nutshell. And... I would imagine that when you were interviewed, not by independent media like us, but when you were interviewed by corporate media, that you probably had somewhat of a similar experience. How can a socialist possibly run a big city like this? How are you going to pay for all this? How are you going to pay for it? How do you even give people hope when you know it's not possible to do these yeah. things? Yeah. So many interviews are like that. And one particular interview that stands out to me the day after I won the primary, um, there's a local... Um, <laughs> reporter's name is Ed Drench and he's so cute I love him and he says to me um how are you going to relate to people um from marginalized communities like the LGBTQ community and I was like okay and then he said something about like my public safety plan and he said how are you going to convince drug dealers you know making all that money to go work regular jobs <laughs> is that how that works? Is that normally how plans work? We approach the dealers on the street and say, look, here's the plan. I'm the mayor. You're going to your your go get a regular job. That's how that's the plan. I, I said, I said, I said yeah. do you know? I said, do you know any drug dealers? He said, no, <laughs> do you? I said, I do. And guess what? Most of them would prefer to work a job than to sell yeah. drugs. <laughs>